Sometimes you got to go out and experience culture. So we're there, Pastor Robert, all of us pastors from our region. We're out there walking around. We're going in shops and all that. And then they say, well, the show's getting ready to start. Somebody say the show's getting ready to start. The show's getting ready to start. So we go in the show. Mario Murillo and different other pastors, you know, because people go to the show. They're in there and, you know, a lot of people of culture are in there. And we go in. They sit us down. And we were watching the screws. And we see the beginning. Say beginning. Beginning. We see the beginning. And in the beginning... They had all these different characters and costumes and the set looked like some, uh, some, some, some winter wonderland or something. But then they tell us after a long time, hell don't say long time. Long time. <laughs> I thought it was over. They said, now it's time to take an intermission. Say intermission. intermission. So we take an intermission. So we walk up these big old tall bleachers and go out the, the things, go downstairs. We're fellow limping and everything and doing stuff. We're talking. We're there for a while. Say a while. Wow. See, we're there for a while and nobody knows what's going on. We don't hear anything going on inside because they put us out and we're out there and we're during intermission. Say intermission. Intermission. So during intermission, we're all talking to one another about all kinds of stuff. But after a long intermission, say long intermission, long intermission, they call us back in and we come in and we sit down in our seats and everything. And all of a sudden, the curtain opens. Say the curtain opens. The curtain opens and we see the stage once again. But there's something different about the stage this time. This time, after the curtain call, after the long intermission, all of a sudden, the people of the uh, uh, the, the people in the play have all changed. Their costumes have changed. Uh, the scenery has changed. The message of the musical has changed. All of a sudden, it went from sadness to gladness. And in the last curtain call, it was something that you were like, it would captivate you. It grabbed a hold of you. What am I trying to say? The first 400 years uh, uh, that when the silence it was to put the Old Testament in its place. There were some things that had to take place. But then Jesus died. The curtain was torn. And now the scenario was different. Now you got blacks, Mexicans, Asian, white people that were broken. People that God used to reject. Now they're the main players in it on the last curtain call. And so what is God saying? That because the scenario has changed, because the new set requires something different, we have a different power than what you read from the people in the Old Testament. A few people had what God needed in the Old Testament. Now he says, I'll pour out my spirit. I'll pour my flesh. My God, I'm going to swallow this. That's a hazard. That's my roll up. I'm starting to feel it too. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon the all flesh. That means you. Tell your neighbor, that means you. You're a part of the last curtain call. This is what God is doing. You are, this is why you were born now. Come on. The problem was, that was crazy. I was trying to shut you up. Listen to me. I won't use that no more. I was sitting up here and they'd be like, the pastor laid it all on the line. No, he choked on the phone. Here's the problem. I did notice that a lot of people were just a bunch of extras. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. You hear what I'm saying? There were a bunch of extras in the play. They were just extras. They served no purpose. They just helped make the stage look bigger. And so I said, God, I wonder how many people in church are just extras. Mm. Because God needs an audience so that those that, are, that don't really play a role or have a purpose or won't serve their purpose will see and witness the power of God when their homeboy changes. Because a lot of times you say, well, uh, th that guy that you saw or that young girl you saw playing around in church, you just assume ain't nothing going to happen in their life. But one day they caught it. One day you thought that they were just an extra, but they were just playing a role that was a yeah. supportive role. They weren't one of the main cast at that time. But how many know that roles change at certain times? You didn't realize that you were called to play a greater role because you can't play a role until you know your purpose because your role draws a 
your power, from your purpose. I need some people in here to realize you play a purpose in the church. Don't just sit in the church and be an extra. You got to let God know. I want to act up. I want to be in this kingdom play. You called me to do something for your honor, but I got a purpose. Everybody said I'd be dead in jail. God bless them. Amen. Now you come to my church. Amen. 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 And that's what they said about many of you. Oh, man. Have you seen so and so? Oh, man. She's, I don't know, bro. You know, he got his new lady now. Y'all got this new lady, man. She got a new car. You know, she's a cashier over there at Quick Stop. <laughs> Because guys like that, when they don't work, they like anything. She got jobs, she got benefits. Like she can put you on. And, uh, they can get me on there. I can't get you on. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, no, we're not married. Oh, well, I'm going to marry you soon. Can't you just forge my name? And how many people come in here and want to manipulate a ride to heaven? Oh. Hey, man, want to act like your name could be forged in the Lamb's Book of Life. I told you, God, don't keep it real. He keeps it right. See, listen to me. I'm in with this. I've said this a thousand times. And so your baby heard this a bunch too. Amen. When the Bible says that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, hear me now. Here's what they're talking about. You've got to know Jewish custom. And it also says in Revelation 3 5, because the big argument for everybody, calling somebody a false prophet or something. Is that people who say once saved, always saved, say that we're false prophets. Yeah. Because they use John 10. Uh, when they're in my hand, nothing can pluck them out. See, the problem is, who told you you were in God's hands? Oh, that's right. Come on. <laughs> you know what shows you're in God's hands? Obedience to God's word. Mm. And so they say, God, that's true. You got, you got some truth there. But it does say in Revelation 3, 5, they don't like talking about that, that it says, if you endure until the end, I will not blot out your name from the Lamb's book of life. That ain't in there just for some, some Jesus, you got anything else you want to say? Mm, I don't know. Uh, how many pages I got? How far down on the page is it? Okay. Revelation chapter 3, let me see. Okay. Let me get a verse 5 in there. Uh, if you endure forever, I will not blot out your name from the Lamb's book of life. How's that sound? That sounds good. That's good. Can we pin? That's right. He didn't do it for that. It means something. You know what it means? Down the corridors of time, there's going to be some people that will lead people into hell. Because they'll say, you can live like the devil, and as long as you said at the altar, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, then you're going to heaven. The devil is a liar. Yes. And every one of those preachers will have a pulpit with fire coming off of it, and you can preach to the lava. Mm -hmm. Come on now. You cannot live wrong. I cannot live wrong and die right. That's right. Amen. The reason it says that our name can be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life is because in the Hebrew, the name of a person is their purpose. And if you and I come to church and we live our life for the money, if we live our life for the world, and you do not, and I do not serve my purpose, then my name will be etched out of the Lamb's Book of Life. How do you know that, Pastor? Well, let me help you out, make it simple. Mary, you're going to have a baby. Come on now. You're not going to name him what you want to name him. Amen? Amen. You ain't going to name him a little Smokey. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and all these extra dates. Smoking. He said, you are going to call him Jesus. Amen. Okay, why? Because he says it right after that. Because he's going to take away the sins of mankind. Hallelujah. See, God says your name represents your purpose. Amen. See, the reason you won't see Gerald written in heaven is because being Gerald is not my purpose. I don't hear God say, Gerald. I hear my purpose from God. Man of God, son, one that I've called to do great things. And I, you can laugh if you want. I know I'm called. Death tried to swallow me too many times for me not to believe that God wants me to do great things. Amen. See, my great things ain't for me. This is what you got to understand when it comes to great things. The great thing ain't for me to try to be on TV. If it happens, it happens. But, and that's what they, they don't want somebody like me on TV. I'm too direct. Amen. They'll be like, I ain't sending no money in. Amen. Because he said, I'm over here, my girlfriend with a, you know, with 
You know, I know my wife ain't acting right. We separated, so I had to go get me a rib. You no, know, because everybody likes some ribs. Raise your hand if you like ribs. Amen. So I got my rib. You know, because some of us act like we can never be alone. Oh, you know, God's trying to work some things out. I don't want to work it out. I just, I can't be alone. I've been alone for two months, oh and you know what? And, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and God would have me alone. You know how people act like their problems bigger than God's promise? Uh, you know, God, no, no. Oh, she's beyond help, Pastor. Really? So you mean to tell me you're going to spit in God's face like that? To tell me there's a human being who has a situation that God can't work out? The devil is a liar. See, God can do it. It's just that you a flesh monster and don't want to do it. 